Hi, my name's Andy. Um, this is the uh, third part of our series about how to write your first ever computer program. Um, a game, a very, very simple game uh, for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, and by the way, this will work perfectly well on uh, another computer. And if you do it on a Linux computer, uh, doing it will be pretty similar to what we're doing on the Pi. Uh, check out the blog post for any uh, um, of the details if you miss them as, we, as they shoot past. Um, but today we're going to do, um, uh, we're going to find out what the program we're writing actually does, what the game's going to be like, and um, we're going to write the uh, complete outline of that game. Um, uh, you know, at the end of this, uh, we're going to have written the whole program, but none of it's going to work. It won't even run correctly. Uh, so, uh, sounds exciting, right? So let's have a look at our... Um, Raspberry Pi. Remember from last time we got to a, a great big Raspberry and we learned how to open up the, um, the text editor and then run the program in the terminal. So let's open up that again. So let's open, whoops, let's open LeafPad. I've kept the fonts quite big in LeafPad um, as we had them last time just so you can see what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is load up the file that we made before and we're going to completely delete everything in it. So file open, click on Pi, and then choose redgreen.py, which is the program we uh, we wrote last time, which just said hello to us. Uh, we're going to completely delete all of that, and uh, we're going to write a new program. And um, I'm going to try and convince you through this series that writing computer programs is a bit like uh, casting magic spells. Um, and uh, uh, one of the best ways of writing a program is to just assume that the stuff you're not thinking about now is magic. Um, and then think about it later, or perhaps you've already thought about it. But um, particularly if you do it, and then uh, if you if you write it as if it already exists, and then think about how to do the details later, you often end up with quite well structured programs um, that make sense at each level because um, you don't think too much about the lower levels while you're writing the higher level. Um, if you want to know more about that, there's this amazing book called The Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs. Uh, don't read it yet, but when you read it, you're going to love it. Okay, so let's write our program. Uh, and our program is going to consist of... Um, uh, well, let me explain what it does. So we're going to write a game. It's going to be an extremely simple game, uh, which tests your reactions. What's going to happen is um, the screen will be blank. We're saying ready. Uh, and then a green circle will appear, or a red square will appear. If the green circle appears, you have to quickly press a key. If the red square appears, you must not press a key, or you lose points. Um, it'll do that a few times and that'll be the end. So um, a very simple version of that um, program, or the very simple outline of that program, is going to go something like this. So we need to start off what we're doing. So I'm going to type the word start. So if you're following along, try and type exactly what I'm typing, same case, same, uh, same type of bracket, everything like that. Um, so we're going to have to start up. So we'll, we'll start, and we'll put a bracket bracket there. Uh, a bracket bracket uh, means that you're doing something. So in Python, you can you can write a thing, which is a sort of a mini program called a function, um, and you, you give it a name. So we're assuming that there's going to be a function called start, uh, and then to call that function, you put that bracket bracket there. Later on, we might have some things in between the brackets, uh, which is stuff that you're passing into that function, that sort of mini program. Um, but for the moment. Uh, we're just going to say you start, just do it. So start. I'm going to have another one called ready screen. So basically say to the person who's playing this game, get ready. Uh, there's going to be a shape coming. Then we're going to wait. So we show the ready screen and then we wait. And we wait for a slightly random amount of time so that they don't know exactly when this shape's going to come. Um, so after the wait, we're going to show the shape. So I'm going to... Um, call a function not yet written called shape and then finally once we've finished we want to tell the person how well they did and so on like that uh, so we're going to uh, pretend that there's a function called end so this is purely pretend at the moment this is our whole program uh, start display the ready screen wait for a period of time show a shape to the person and find out whether or not they press the button and then show them a screen at the end saying um, well done or not well done uh, okay, so we've finished, right? Well, let's run it. 
Open up the terminal just like we did last time. Oh gosh, that's big. Let's make it a bit smaller, shall we? I wonder why it's so big. I think it has a standard size. Um, and I've made the font big, so it has a standard size in characters. Okay, so our program is in this directory because we put it inside the Py. So to run it, we can just say Python redgreen.py. And what is it saying to us? Well, it doesn't look good, does it? Something's gone wrong. It's not showing us any green shapes, that's for sure. What it says is, um, look at the last line. That's in, uh, of interest to us. It says name error. Name start is not defined. So if we look back at our program, the first thing our program does is it calls a function, it tries to run this mini program. Uh, the mini program it's trying to run is one called start, but we haven't actually written anything called start yet. So it doesn't actually work. And that's where we're going to leave it. We've written our magic spell. We don't know how it's going to do it, but we know it's going to look something like that. And next time we will start looking at how each of these ingredients, how each of these functions that we're pretending exists, might actually be written. We'll probably write one and a half of them next time. So, see you then.